Hello. We're playing great, it's the board game. If you think this is hard, try playing the game. The game is very hard. Your turn. Well, we're not here to review a board game, we're here to review Gradius and Salamander, which was a part of the Gradius series. We're going to look at them on arcade and on all the consoles. First, let's have a look at what inspired Gradius to be one of the best shoot 'em ups ever created. Let's look at where it started and what spawned off shoot 'em ups of all types. Okay, now it's time to get onto Gradius. Before we get onto these console versions, I want to get onto the arcade. One that started in 1985, let's go and have a look in the arcade room. Okay, here it is, the 1985 original Konami Gradius. This is a 16-bit board, and on the reverse side of the board, it has special custom chips that had staggered legs to prevent it from being copied. In this room, this is where all my arcade stuff's kept. So today we're looking at Gradius. But over the next few reviews, 10 reviews, 20 reviews, most of the arcade stuff that we're going to refer to will be in this room. Behind the camera, I have dedicated machines, but not yet. For now, we're focusing on Gradius. This here is Gradius 1. We're going to be looking at the in-depth of what got Gradius started. So let's get cracking. Okay, now the actual game. The first thing you'll notice about Gradius is this. It's not just your normal shoot 'em up. As you can see on the bottom, you've got to collect power ups that can give you speed, missile, double, laser, option, and the question mark is shield. As you get power ups, you end up collecting all these to make your ship, known as the Vic Viper, extremely powerful to defeat other ships and their bosses. There's one thing to be said for Gradius, it's its solid gameplay. Most shoot 'em ups around this time, the backgrounds were very plain. Gradius had a real diverse and colourful landscape. Okay, the first home version I had was the Commodore 64 version. It's faithful to the arcade. However, there was missing one major component. Forget the graphics, the music. The music of all things was missing from the game. All it had was sound effects. It looked like a 1970s game without that music. Oh well. After the Commodore 64 version, I got the NES version. Now, this was a lot better. Great graphics, great sound, great playability, but best of all, it had music. And the music was very good, especially for its age. Ah, Nemesis on the Game Boy. A very underrated game. The playability is top notch on this game. And yes, it has music. Just a little Game Boy game has music. The levels are quite different. Definitely worth getting. If you got yourself a Game Boy, try and find one. Okay, Salamander, made in 1986, one year after Gradius. Now, this does belong in the Gradius universe, even though it's not a sequel. Now, the difference between Salamander and this instead of collecting power ups so you can choose your weapons, you are awarded weapons straight off, as you can see here with the Ripple Laser. The other difference between Salamander is something quite unique. As you are going along horizontally, every second stage it will change to vertical. It makes the gameplay quite fun and rewarding. The other good thing about Salamander, yes again, the music. Again like Gradius, my first home version was the Commodore 64 version. The Commodore 64 version of Salamander, although some people might disagree, was awesome. The music was unbelievable. Just look at the graphics. For its time, it was quite good. I love this fire stage. Okay, Life Force on the NES. This is pretty much identical to Salamander. The differences are this. Instead of having your typical power-ups 
as Salamander did have on the arcade in the 64, this time they used the Gradius system. Secondly, it's got a more organic feel to it. Now, here's the other big thing to note. Did you have a look at the title screen at the start? Notice it said Nintend, not Nintendo. Nintendo being quality control freaks, limited Konami to only making 22 games a year. This caused a bit of a feud and made Konami start up a new company called Ultra as they made Ninja Turtles and other games. Okay, let's move on to Gradius 2. Made in 1988, only three years after Gradius 1, and what an upgrade. It's actually quite good. There's another thing you'll notice about these Gradius games as we're moving along. It's these things. The Moya. The Moya is the head statue from Easter Island. Now, I didn't even know what they were. I thought they were a Konami thing when I was young. And as doing research over the years, I realised they were from Easter Island. Anyway, moving on. Not too much else to say about Gradius 2. Now here's Gradius 2 on the PC Engine. Pretty much arcade perfect. It's one thing a little bit better. Because of its CD-ROM capabilities, it had CD quality sound. This is one to look at. Very nice. Okay, now we're getting there. Gradius 3, probably one of my all-time favourite Gradius in the series. This one is awesome. I treasure this on my PCB. However, the arcade, as good as it is, yes, it has more levels than the Super Nintendo. It has no slowdown comparison to the Super Nintendo. It is that hard. I put it on easy, it is that hard. Even these extra 3D stages, it's almost impossible to pass them. Here's those Moyas again. Look at the extra stages. And this Phoenix Dragon. The game is awesome. The arcade has so much more extra than the Super Nintendo. The other thing you'll notice about these Gradius series. All the bosses can be quite hard. But the final boss is the easiest boss in the game. Sometime only requiring a few shots to kill it. Oh well, that's Gradius for ya. Okay, let's look at Gradius 3 on the Super Nintendo. Now, this is actually an awesome game. One, it's not too hard. The other thing is, it has pretty bad slowdown, but you know what? It actually helps with the game, so I don't mind it as much. But this one I can play over and over and over again. There's just something so addictive about Gradius 3 on the Super Nintendo. This was a launch title, so good on them. Alright, Salamander 2 on the arcade. This was also released in a deluxe pack for the Sega Saturn. I'm not going to bother putting those on at the moment because we've got other games to get through. Just have a look at this. Need I say any more? Here's a good one. Greatest game on the PlayStation 1. This was only available to Japan only. Why would they limit it to Japan only? This is one of the best greatest on a console. It's exclusive, not on arcade. Man, this is awesome. What is it with these Moyers? They're everywhere. Ah, and look at this beast. This is actually the Gradius 4 arcade board. The same board as Silent Scope. The Gradius 4 is quite a good game. The graphics are awesome. But again, it is that hard. The other thing is, it's not my favourite of the Gradius series. Look, I'm not putting it down. I know some people will slam me for it. But it just doesn't have the same feel as, say, Gradius 3. Gradius Rebirth on the Wii. This is a WiiWare download. And for under $20, this is well worth it. It's got a mixture of Salamander, Gradius, everything. And yes, it's got those Moyers again. They're never going to drop that out of a Gradius game. Look at this boss. It's just one big Moya. Gradius Rebirth is a must-have if you own a Wii. Okay, we're going to finish off with Gradius 5. One of my favourite games of all time. I love this game. I've spent in total 450 hours playing this game. It is my favourite shoot 'em up of all time. Due to some of the staff members from Treasure working on Gradius when they were working at Konami, Konami swiftly called Treasure back to finish Gradius 5. And look at it. What a result. I could go on forever, but I'm going to let you enjoy the wonders of Gradius 5. Here we go. God, I love it! We're going to talk about Gradius forever. 
but we're not going to. I'm going to stop there. What I am going to show you is Greatest Advance on the Game Boy Advance, which was an exclusive title. So as a bonus, here it is. Thank you.